Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at an original Xbox. So the console power is on. Perfectly fine. Uh, it's a stock console. Um, power is on. You'll see in the corner there. The Xbox logo pairs. So it, it boots perfectly fine. What I want to do today is revisit the topic of CPU upgrades. So since the last video I did, as of today, uh, May 2024, there are multiple options now when you do a CPU upgrade, and I'll leave a link to everything down below. So you've seen me do the original method, which was the N64 Interposer. I'll leave a link if you want to purchase these from N64 on its GitHub page. Um, since then, there's also been uh, Kekuli, who released essentially a one-to-one -one clone of this guy, so they're both like quite literally the same. Um, I'll leave a link to these. For these, you can just download the uh, files and purchase it from PCBWay or wherever you purchase your PCBs from. So he released a one-to-one -one clone and he also released a no-speed version, which is as you see. The difference here is this part is chopped off, which is the uh, speed speed reduction to basically if you were to have these populated it would it would go back to stock so 733 versus 1.4 most of the time we don't populate these because there's no real purpose um so this is just if you didn't want the no speed you can do that but otherwise it's the same and also since then uh frank i'll also leave a link <coughs> to his repo at least his version of the interposer which the difference between so these three are exactly the same. Like they look the same, the back's the same, all that fun stuff. Uh, difference with Frank's is it's the same size as Kikuli's no speed. It's just like a tad bit smaller, but the difference is in the back. So Frank's is his has three resistors. So essentially, what these resistors are for is to use as spacers so when you lay it on the motherboard it stays flat versus like if you don't use it there's a chance that if this is the motherboard it can be high or low so it'll lay even and once again this is the same uh with just a tighter profile it's a little bit more centered um so when you sit it on the motherboard it's not off to the side or anything like that. Um, I have these pre-populated, but all of these, all of these, all of these interposers use the same exact components. They may be moved around a little bit, like these three are exactly the same. These, for Frank's, is in a slightly different position, but same exact stuff. And the benefit of using his is, it comes with this nice little tool. Well, not doesn't come with it, but you could purchase it, which as you see, um, it's called an Xbox Interposer Align Tool. And all it is is each pad, each BGA pad on the motherboard is basically see-through. So you would put this and you would align it and it makes life easier. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this guy apart. And we're going to go through the CPU process because I feel like I have it down packed. And it should be a one go. And we'll have, hopefully at the end, a CPU upgraded console using Frank's new interposer. But like I said, I'll leave everything down below. If you want to do one of these, you can. Um, since I did my first one, the price of CPUs have gone up, quite expensive, so that's really the only thing, and of course you still need skills, I guess, and a BGA machine, but we'll go through all of that, so I'll set you guys up and we'll uh, start taking the console apart. And while we do that, I would like to say thank you to today's sponsor, PCBWay, the premier destination for top quality printed circuit boards. In a short span, PCBWay has become the go-to choice for seamless online ordering, rapid prototyping, and unparalleled customization. From hobbyists like myself to industry leaders, PCBWay has earned the trust through its commitment to precision and reliability. Cutting edge technology and a skilled team ensure that every PCB meets the highest standards. Beyond circuits, PCBWay fosters a vibrant community of creators, turning ideas into reality. Join the innovation wave with PCBWay, where quality meets ingenuity. And from now until June 2nd, you can participate in the KitKat Open Source Design Contest. Rules and information will be provided in the link down below. Explore PCB Way for your next project.
Alrighty, so you just saw me reball the interposer, so that's cooling. Basically the next step with this new Frank interposer is there's an alignment tool. And what we're looking at here is, if you see, it's basically see-through. So this is the top, it goes on like this. So it goes on like this. And basically what you need to do is you need to take these whole, these dots and line it up with each pad on here which makes it kind of easier, I suppose. Once you line it up, you tack down the corners using resistors, and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna try to like double camera this, cause it'll be tough. So I think it's something like this. Basically it's like this, where it's touching. And if we, it'll be kind of annoying. Last two corner ones, I'm gonna try to line it by. So it'd be the corner ones are on the square. Yeah. It should basically be like that. So. That's good, and basically, from here, what you would do is you would tack down each side. So, like, I'm gonna add some resistors to hold it in place. So, yeah. Basically, the way you do that is you find spots that you think would hold it, and you either like attach it to one, so like I can attach it there, or I can attach it there, or I can attach it on the top. And I basically have a bunch of old, no, not scrap, but like I have a bunch of caps and stuff I can easily use, so that's what I'm gonna do. Would help if we had thoughts. Something like that. And you can always go back and like readjust as you feel fit. Um, but basically I'm gonna add like three more, probably one here, and one up there. And I like to have mine push against this side since there's like resistors and caps here. Um, I just have mine push against this side. And then, yeah, we'll come back once I get that sorted. Alrighty, and that's the um, interpo the alignment tool. So I did three. I did one, two, three, and it all sits 
this way and basically what you would do is you would lift it and you would put this so this is the interposer that you saw me reball so it uses 0 0.76 balls on the bottom you would add one two three three random resistors on three corners and those are just these are just used for spacers nothing else to basically just keep it a little higher and on the top I'll leave a link obviously to everything but you need to pre-populate every single one of these so with different caps and resistors of different values and you've seen me do it before once we place this down I'm gonna have to go with a solder paste low melt and basically ball up each each um bad place CPU and we'll be good to go so basically I'm gonna remove this plop this one down and we're gonna reflow it um, since we're using low melt it'll flow out light sorry since th so this is leaded sorry so the bottom balls are leaded so this is gonna flow back at 200 which is what we use to lift the original CPU and then we'll kind of take it step by step so next up place this down we ball it back on Alrighty, so with this step, the difference here is the interposer is a lot smaller, so you saw me float on the board. So it's basically the size of the CPU. You saw me put the paste, so now the CPU is on here. Basically at this step, same as always, I need to heat it up to 170, 175-ish. So my profile is going to run, it's going to run in three stages, 160, 170, 180. I stop it 170, 175 when I see each pin that the paste has kind of liquefied and adhere to each pin. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, yeah, you're just kind of watching happen. And hopefully when it works, uh, we can test in the next, you know, part after it cools down. So basically once I do this, I let it cool down naturally. So I'll stop my profile and let it take as long as it needs to to cool down to like 50-ish degrees and then we'll kind of test it out.
Alrighty, so the console cooled enough to at least test it. So as you see, motherboard's in here, CPU. Probably need to replace the caps, but let's see what happens. It's just gonna be a quick one. So no frag, that's good. Blink and green, I think it's gonna work. And boom, works. So I'm just gonna power it off now before it blows up. From here, what I wanna do next is I'm gonna do the RAM off screen. There's like voltage mods, I gotta replace the caps. Just through my rework process, at least one's bulge, so I'm just gonna replace all of them. Clock caps already gone, so I'm gonna do RAM, voltage modded, and we'll come back when it's uh when all that's done. Alrighty, we're back and this is the final product, so let's all put back together and let's power it on. Uh I put on a open xenium of Prometheus. Uh, I didn't update the hard drive or anything yet, so you won't see anything different there, but to go here. Uh, as you see, the free mem is 118 on the bottom. Uh, fans sound loud because you should set a 1.4 gigahertz console to at least 40%, I think it is. So as you see, CPU, 1400 megahertz, it's a 1.4, I believe, 120 MB RAM. Uh, somewhere in here, I set the fan. Uh, general options, yeah, so I set my fan minimum to 40, you should probably do 100%. <laughs> um, and we're just going to launch the TSOP. Like I said, I didn't I didn't get around to updating the hard drive yet, so it's just going to be the regular Xbox Sash work. Um, everything works fine. Um, yeah, that's kind of it, to be honest with you. But as you see, it works. Clock cap was removed, so my clock is broken until I connect to the internet. But yeah, that's basically... Uh, what we got going on for the end product, so it looks, you know, it worked. Uh, it's a lot simpler than using the N64 interposer in the sense of because you now have an alignment tool, it's easier to align it and place the caps to keep the actual interposer in place. Adding the three resistors on the bottom help with keeping everything uh, balanced and flat. And yeah, it's just a different kind of profile and stuff. I, I think it's cooler. I think it's a little cleaner and nicer, but you know, each their own. You can use any, all the kind of the same once you have your BGA stuff down pack. But yeah, I'll leave a link to everything like I mentioned down below, all files, voltage, uh, heatsink shrouds, all the fun stuff will be in the links down below if you want to do it yourself. Hopefully this was useful. As always, if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And yeah, as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one, whatever that may be. See ya.